this module arrived in the last few days and um, what it is is a frequency generator so um, so it's got a nice LCD display I think it's backlit from the from the look of it there so it's got an LCD readout it's got some buttons on it for adjusting the frequency and the duty cycle and uh, interestingly down here is a serial interface which allows you to control it via serial so for example by connecting it into an Arduino as you see around the edges so so here we've got the power input on this side and over this side we've got the the actual frequency output so what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect some wires to it and so put some power wires on it put uh, some output wires here and I'm going to well first of all connect it to the oscilloscope so we can have a look at the waveforms that come out of it and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect I think an Arduino to the serial pins here and we'll see if we can control it via the serial interface so here we are on the bench I've got the oscilloscope connected to the frequency generator so uh, one thing that immediately strikes me is that um, it remembers the the frequency that you've dialed in uh, over a, over a power off so if I if I disconnect from the power so this is 508 Hertz at the moment if I disconnect and I'll put it back on the power again Oh, the fiddly wires. Okay, so we've got it powered back on, and once again it's gone back to 508. So that's quite good. So it actually remembers the the settings. Must be writing those into um, a bit of uh, E prom somewhere so that it can bring the values back. So we we got two things on the display. We've got at the top the frequency so that's saying 508 Hertz and at the bottom is the mark space ratio which we can alter so if I just show you um, there's four buttons along the bottom so you've got frequency plus frequency up frequency minus frequency down and then the same for the duty cycle so you've got up and down so you can vary this from 0% to 100% I'll show you that in a minute on the on the scope so if I increase the, the frequency, when you get up to 1K, it then changes the display slightly. So you've got the, the decimal point set to tell you that you're now in the kilohertz. So you can keep going up all the way up to... now at the top here so you've got now two decimal points set so 1.5.0 means 150 kilohertz so if we go down to back to the 10 again so there you've got 99.9 .9 kilohertz and then you go over now we're, now we're in the 100 kilohertz range so looking on the scope if we get the scope to adjust itself there we are so we've got nice nice square edges on the square wave and this is the 100 kilohertz and uh, this is two volts per division so that's four volts peak to peak output and in fact the the um, peak to peak voltage uh, as we'll see in a minute is set by the power rail it's it's going right up to the power rail so I'm actually running this off a lithium-ion battery so it's somewhere around 4 volts as the, the switching um, amplitude and uh, I can just show you the well we've got it on the scope screen here I can show you the duty cycle so at the moment you get a nice 50-50 um, but we can reduce that let's say set it at 20 so there we go so now we've got 20% on and 80% off 
and you can vary it all the way down, well, it's down to zero in fact, which is not that useful, but you can set it to 1%, oh, it doesn't seem to be triggering the oscilloscope, but yeah, I don't seem to be able to get the oscilloscope to trigger on 1%, but if I if I put it on 2%, you can see that there's a, a train of pulses there. And so we can increase this. And we can go all the way up to 100%, 99%. So you can see it's now nearly all high with just the 1% low. So that's quite a useful little tool. Um, I think this was this was about th three pounds to buy, so um, pretty good value. It's uh, based around a uh, microcontroller, the STM8 microcontroller, and um, I'll, I'm going to have a look at the board and see if I can figure out what's what's on there apart from the microcontroller. But it seems like a, a very simple design. Um, I'm not sure if this was made for some particular type of equipment but uh, I, I got this module from icstation.com and, and uh, as I said it wasn't very expensive so I imagine they've made this in a in a very large quantity. Uh, it also has a, a serial interface so that uh, offers the tantalizing possibility of being able to connect it up to uh, a serial port or to to an Arduino port perhaps and to be able to uh, set the frequency and duty cycle and also read back uh, the current settings from the module so I'm, so I'm going to have a go at that. So one more thing I'm just going to drop the frequency right down and right down into the audible band okay so that's around one kilohertz now the uh, the display reads a little bit high I've noticed so according to the oscilloscope it's that's 948 Hertz but on here it's saying 955 and in fact I, I did a check just now I put the uh, unity multimeter on here as well and um, that that was agreeing with the oscilloscope so I think the display is reading slightly high but it's it's not it's not very bad it's not very badly off it's you know 1% or something okay so below 1 kilohertz you can see there's some distortion to to the wave here there's a sort of you know sort of overshoot overshoot peak here on the square wave but it's a, it's a good shape so i think for the money this is you know a good good value little module so here's a little partial schematic that i've made for the, uh, this board i'm just going to have a cup of tea so um So basically the core of this design is the STM8 uh, microcontroller. If you haven't come across this, this is a, a kind of similar thing to the um, the kind of controllers that go into uh, Arduinos. So uh, it has some has a CPU on board and some RAM and it has input output ports. So it's it's for the same kind of embedded designs that you'd see with a with an Arduino. Um, but these these are quite low cost chips. So the STM8 is the is the main controller. So this is obviously running some software to to generate the waveforms. And this is connected via a bus here by via the SPI bus into a an LCD driver chip. So the 1621 LCD driver chip. Uh, and that's the the main core of this design. So apart from that, we have the receive and transmit pins of the STM8 
the go out directly to the uh, edge connector so this is how you get into the serial port you're actually interacting with the serial port on the STM8 the four buttons are connected to four of the general purpose inputs and they they just uh, short to ground to uh, to activate them um, we have a header up here which I think must be for programming it so s some of the pins from the controller have been extended to uh, um, to to a header where I, maybe a little jig can come down in the factory to program the chip there's a, a 3 volt regulator on the board because the chips run off 3 volts and this is the power output here so as, as I mentioned before uh, the power that's coming in, in my case the 4 volts power, goes through through a, a simple NPN output stage. So we've got the PD3 uh, output port of the STM8 microcontroller. So that's driving the base of the transistor. So this is where the waveforms come out of the chip and then they, they get boosted up to the 4 volts peak to peak that's available on the power output. Uh, and, and basically that's it so it's a rather simple design and everything's really done uh, entirely in, in software on the microcontroller. I've attached the frequency generator to one of these little uh, CH340 USB adapter boards so I can plug it into the PC and uh, we'll try and use the serial interface from the uh, from um, TerraTerm, I think, a free software package. So I'll set this up for serial interface. So COM6 is what that uh, CHC40 has just got recognized as. So according to the website, we have to set for 9600, 8 none, uh, flow control none. So that should be correct. fail okay so we're, we're getting some kind of serial communication with the thing but um, but it's returning fail let's just change the settings here so it seems to be line feed that it needs yeah that looks, that looks better um, so we're supposed to be able to do F101 but it just in fact says fail every time I type something or D050 read was the other command fail so that's not very helpful is it so I'm not sure exactly how that's supposed to work um, obviously anybody watching this video if you've had more success in using the serial interface on this board uh, please add a comment down below and let me know what the what the trick is um, so I'll persevere with this and see if I can get a different result by connecting it to through an Arduino for example um, but for now I'm not really sure what more I can do with that okay well thanks very much for watching my latest video with the frequency generator module uh, I just wanted to say a big thank you to my subscribers so I recently went over 200 subscribers uh, and I, I I made a thank you video just a few months ago to thank the 50 people who are watching my videos and now it's over 200 so I'm really really delighted about that and um, uh, I'm glad to see that there's an audience for these kind of videos so please continue to comment 
and uh, keep obviously keep subscribed for more videos and I hope we can do some more interesting things together. Thanks very much. <laughs>